Scott Walker is out of the 2016 presidential race. John Boehner is stepping down as House Speaker. The Pope's been in the U.S. for like 10 seconds, and already he's working miracles. <laughs> Welcome to ACT TV. I'm Juliana Forlano. Pope Francis visited the U.S. this week for the first time and caused a Pope apocalypse. The Pope in America. Pope Francis. Pope. Pope. Pope Francis. Pope Ageden. Pope. Pope. Pope Francis. Pope a Palooza. <laughs> Many wondered if self-proclaimed holier than thou right wingers would crucify His Holiness for his views on climate change and income inequality. To which I respond, is the Pope Catholic? It's sad watching this Luddite leftist condemn capitalism. The same people who gave us Obama gave us this Pope. This Pope needs an exorcism. There is one Republican reportedly in awe over the Pope's visit to New York City. It's Chris Christie, who himself could only dream of holding up that much traffic. Yes, the pontiff's arrival in New York City caused traffic jams, delays, and even gridlock. Or as we New Yorkers like to call it, Tuesday. <laughs> Right-wingers aren't the only ones upset with the Pope. Liberals have penned articles this week titled The False Compassion of Pope Francis. Why is a radical pope about to canonize a priest who helped enslave and murder Native Americans? And if Pope Francis really wants to fight climate change, he'd be a feminist. All of which do make some good points. If you want to read them, you can find them, uh, over at the Debbie Downer Network. <laughs> Progressives have more things to be happy about with this pope than any other in history. He's broken with tradition on a number of fronts, saying atheists can get into heaven by simply doing good. He said animals have souls, and that the church is too obsessed with abortion, gay marriage, and contraception. I'm sorry, I might have asked this before, but is the Pope Catholic? Because according to all our TV Catholics, the only thing we should care about is... Abortion. 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 Let me get this straight. The Pope is basically saying that I don't have to be a one-issue voter? That people of faith don't have to cast their votes based solely on a candidate's stance on abortion? The Pope is saying this. Well, that is new. Catholic voters, the majority of whom would not vote with uh, a certain party, Republicans, if they voted based on other Catholic priorities. Peace, brotherly love, caring for the least of them, the whole thou shalt not kill agenda that includes the already born. These voters have permission from the Pope to consider a wide variety of moral issues when choosing who to vote for. And in South Carolina, there'll be no need to go to confession for the sin of voting for a Democrat this time. Yeah, because last time around, the priests insisted on that. <sighs> in his speech to a joint session of Congress, the Pope said some exciting things. Unfortunately for Sarah Palin, his speech was in English and not, as she requested, in American. Catholic Democrats were hopeful the pontiff would discuss immigration, while Catholic Republicans sought affirmation for their 11th commandment. Thou shalt blame everything on Benghazi. The Pope's English is heavily accented. I happen to speak Italian, so I'm gonna translate some of his most powerful statements. Environmental challenge. Here he calls for an immediate effort to address climate change and to implement a culture of care. Here he reminds all of our elected officials that the chief aim of politics is to defend the dignity of fellow citizens and a dogged pursuit of the common good. The common good? He's a socialist, just like this guy. Here he calls for an end to the death penalty and here, he insists that the Emmy for Outstanding Drama series should totally have gone to Mad Men. Oh, that's what he said. For real. Still, some of his own followers are diminishing his message of brotherly love. This writer at the National Catholic Reporter is insisting that the Pope is all talk. Well, I know some other guys who are all talk, and they seem to be having a significant effect. Ugh. Also, the Vatican is following through on actions to back up its beliefs. In 2010, it installed enough solar panels to power a small country, which it is. Last year, Francis installed showers for the homeless in St. Peter's Square, and he suspended a bishop who spent almost 43 million church dollars to renovate his house. And now he's telling the U.S. Congress to end the arms trade to their face, their drunken, drippy, guilty face. Conservatives are not taking this well. You can read all about it in their new book, The Audacity of Pope. Okay, it's not a real book, but you don't want to just read about compassionate action. You want to do it. Go here to sign the petition to encourage the Vatican to divest its billion dollars in assets from the fossil fuel industry. Go here to divest your own money. Encourage your bank to invest in green alternatives. 
You're watching ACT TV. I'm Juliana Forlano. There are things you can do, and each episode will bring you one or two things that you can do to stay involved. ACT TV, do more than just watch. Oh, and hey, if you didn't get a chance to see the moral call to action in the Pope's speeches, you can just watch Democratic presidential candidate Bernie Sanders' recent talk at Liberty University. He's saying basically the same stuff. We have to, in my view, understand that there is no justice when so few have so much and so many have so little. Feel the burn.